Okay, so in the last video, I just kind of gave you numbers for how many bedrooms or pizzas or laundry or cooking could be done, uh, but I never really told you where I got those numbers or how, I, how we can determine those numbers uh, or even how those numbers are determined uh, in different countries. Okay, so let's pretend that we have a country that produces uh, wine and cheese, okay? <clears throat> and so we know that they can produce wine and cheese. They have some amount of labor that exists, okay? And they can allocate that labor towards either producing wine or cheese. And so let's say that to produce uh, one bottle of wine, <coughs> excuse me, takes, uh, let's say, uh, two hours of labor. And let's say that one pound of cheese takes one hour of labor. Okay, so we can define some terms Let's call them A L W is the time required to produce wine, and A L C is equally time required to produce cheese. Okay. <clears throat> and then let's also define another term, L, is the total number of labor hours in a country. Okay, so then we know this. This country, whatever country this is, has some number of hours, L, that they can devote towards producing either wine or cheese. All right, again, you cannot make wine and cheese at the same time, or each individual worker, rather, cannot do that. If you have two different workers, right, one can produce wine and one can produce cheese, but they cannot produce both simultaneously. Okay, and so what we have is the total amount of labor, L, must be uh, greater than, I'm sorry, is it? Hang on. It must be yeah, greater than or equal to the amount of labor devoted to producing cheese times the quantity of cheese that is produced plus the amount of labor dev devoted towards wine times the amount of wine. All right. So remember, if we think about this, ALC times QC is going to be equal to the total amount of time spent making cheese and ALW times QW is going to be equal to the total amount of time spent making wine. Okay, <clears throat> and what this is saying is that if we have a country that only produces cheese and wine, then the total amount of time spent making cheese plus the total amount of time spent, spent making wine has to be less than or equal to the total amount of labor hours that there are. Or in other words, if there's only 24 hours in a day and you dedicate 12 hours of them towards making cheese and 12 hours towards making wine, then you, know, you cannot dedicate a 13th hour towards either one of those products, right? You can't, if there's only 24 hours in a day, then the total amount of time you spend per day doing things has to add up to 24, okay? And so this gets us <clears throat> our uh, total uh, amount of, of production that can happen. So let's say 
let's just assign some numbers to these things. Okay, so uh, let's stick with, you know, A L W was equal to two and A L C is equal to one, right? And notice that we are defining these things as their inverse. So if it were to take less time or if people were to be more productive uh, at producing wine, then this number here would go down, okay? And if people became less productive at making cheese, then this number would go up, okay? So these numbers are the inverse of productivity, okay? These are uh, inverse of productivity, okay? Which means that if they go up, that means people became less productive. And if they go down, then people became more productive, okay? <clears throat> and let's say that this country has a total of 1,000 hours that they can spend, okay? So what we know is that 1,000 must be less than or equal to uh, 1 times QC plus 2 times uh, Q W, right? And we know that, okay? So let me grab another sheet of paper, okay? And we have, again, 1,000 greater than or equal to 1 Q C plus 2 Q W, okay? Now, how can we use this to determine our PPF? So let's say we have cheese and wine, okay? Well, let's pretend that they spend all of their time producing cheese, okay? So what we're interested in are the intercepts here, okay? So if they spend all their time producing cheese, then we just solve this equation for QC, okay? And we would find, we just divide both sides by one, that QC is equal to a thousand, which says that the absolute most amount of cheese that this country can produce is 1,000 pounds, okay? And if we wanted to find out the maximum number of uh, bottles of wine that this country could produce, then we just solve this equation. Oh, a little too high, All right? There we go. Okay, so if we solve this equation, we just divide by two and we find that the absolute greatest number of bottles of wine that this country can produce is 500. And then uh, we can just draw a straight-ish line between them, right? And that would give us our PPF curve, okay? So another way to frame this, right, is that we can produce L over ALC pounds of cheese at most, and L over ALW bottles of wine, okay? And if we do that, we will maximize our production of either cheese or wine, right? In this case, we can produce 1,000 pounds of cheese and zero bottles of wine or 500 bottles of wine and zero cheese or any linear combination between uh, the two, okay? <clears throat> so it doesn't, again, it doesn't, one thing that I should note is it doesn't matter if we put wine on this axis or cheese on this axis or, or what we put, right? We just change the way that this thing looks. It wouldn't indicate anything different economically and just be a slightly different looking uh, graph, okay? And notice that we're assuming a straight line uh, which means we have a constant rate of productivity or, uh, or uh, substitution. Okay, we're assuming that the only thing that goes into production in this case is labor, right? More labor, you either allocate labor towards cheese or wine. 
<coughs> all labor is equally productive. There's no differences between labor hours or anything like that. So we just get a nice straight line curve. Okay. <clears throat> so that's why uh, the curve, the PPF in this particular case, or in the cases that we've been describing, is just a straight line because we're assuming constant returns to labor. Okay. We will relax that constraint uh, in a couple different, in a couple lessons, uh, and go into something that's perhaps a little bit more realistic for the world. Uh, but for now, we're just doing straight lines, uh, straight line PPFs or linear PPFs. Uh, to make the, the lesson easier. We'll complicate things uh, later on, okay?